fellow mech warriors, mage leader here. It is currently 5 a.m. on a Saturday morning, and I am up this early for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, is because this is the time that I normally get up to go to work during the week, and the old biological alarm clock is an absolute bitch. And secondly, because um, there was been something on my mind for the past couple days that's been making it a little bit more difficult to sleep, and it revolves around some things that I said previously. Now, I, a lot of you, in fact I'm sure most of you going by the viewer count, saw my video a couple months back about the 40k migration into Battletech. My advice back then was to uh, relax, let the new guys in, you know, keep a close eye on them, but make them feel welcome because you know, having seen their franchise wrecked by other people, they're not going to come in and try and destroy ours. They already know what it's like. They'd be considerate. And for the most part, I still stand by that. But I think that maybe, just maybe, I was a little bit too lax and naive, I guess you could say. Now, the 40k guys that I've encountered who have come into this community have all been fantastic so far. I've seen very few of them that want to change Battletech into something else. I've seen very few of them who are convinced that it's somehow lesser than 40k. For the most part, what I've seen is that these guys are, you know, they're the guys I enjoyed hanging out with before. That being said, I've also noticed a bunch of new people coming into the community about the same time as these guys who I don't think were actual Warhammer fans either, and I don't think that they want to be Battletech fans, but they are inserting themselves into our communities for a different reason. And I think Razorfist kind of pointed out this in one of his recent streams when he talked about how the problem isn't really the 40k guys themselves as much as it is people on the sidelines who watch this and say, oh look, there's another thing over there that they're flocking to. Let's go and destroy that. And I think that's starting to happen here in Battletech. And I'm going to talk about that. But I'm also going to talk about the Battletech setting as a whole. And there's a kind of unique aspect to this setting where it's got a bit of a double-edged sword in this regard. And I want to cover that as well. So we'll start there. So before we dig in too deep... I just want to give a little bit of background on this whole thing. Now, I have tried very hard to keep present day politics out of my content. I don't like it. You know, in real life, I'm a very political person, but that doesn't mean that I enjoy doing it. I think politics is nasty. Um, it's very unpleasant these days. I'm sure that many people, just by watching my content, can kind of figure out which way I lean, but. I've always kind of seen it as like a death knell for my channel. People want to come here to get away from modern politics, but the, the problem with that is that it's it's just so ingrained in everything now that it's like ignoring the elephant in the room whenever you have to deal with this sort of thing. And it, and it does impact our hobbies, and it impacts our fiction, it impacts the things that we enjoy in our spare time that have nothing to do with it, it's seeped into every single aspect of our lives to the point where you just can't ignore it. So while I'm not going to dive in super hard, I do think that there's something that we kind of need to address. And that's going to be what many people refer to as NPCs or SJWs or what have you. The kind of people who come into a fictional setting or franchise and start to make demands about certain standards that it doesn't meet, that it has to start meeting, or else. People who hold a franchise hostage until it changes into something completely different from what it was supposed to originally be. And these people are looking at Battletech now. They have it in their sites. There are active communities on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, if you saw the more recent Razor Fist video about how he was cancelled by a couple of uh, smaller Twitter groups, then you, you kind of know that this is coming. And while it's still very small at the moment, I think that this sort of thing is kind of like a cancer. If you hit it when it's still small, 
you can kind of get around it. But if you wait, if you sit on it, it will grow bigger and bigger until eventually it becomes impossible to manage and it just kills everything around it. So I want to try and come along and maybe help us nip this thing in the bud because I've been a Star Wars fan, I've been a Star Trek fan, I've been a 40k fan, and I have watched as so many things that I love, things I grew up with, things that I thought would always be around, things that I could just kind of sit back and enjoy. I've watched these things just kind of crumble around me uh, in recent years, and it's so incredibly depressing. And I, this is one of the last things that I have left, Battletech is. And it's kind of one of the reasons I've thrown myself into it so wholeheartedly. This is it. This is like my last line. If this goes, I'm out. Like, I don't have anything left that's enjoyable that I haven't just outright created myself. And, you know, we can talk about the merits of creating your own stuff. And believe me, I'm trying. Uh, but we shouldn't have to always create our own stuff. We should be creating our own stuff, absolutely, but we shouldn't have to. We should still be able to enjoy the stuff that we've always enjoyed. And this group of people is dead set on making sure that only they get to enjoy it. Because to them, you, because you don't completely agree with every single talking point, you are a problem. Not only that, you're a bad person. You don't deserve any happiness whatsoever, and you should be just kicked out of your own community and this is what a lot of the 40k guys were experiencing you know a lot of them aren't coming over here just because of the Warhammer Plus and the GW lawsuit so that was kind of the final straw for a lot of them a bunch of them are coming because these this particular type of community has overrun theirs to the point where it's just not enjoyable anymore and I know what it's like to get kicked out of one of your own franchises and just feel like it's the, the like the fans aren't your friends anymore. So, I'm going to talk about the Battletech setting and how it relates to these types of people. And I think that there are things that give it a unique advantage in this regard, but also a disadvantage, because I think it will attract these sorts of people. So, uh, these folks who like to, like to come in and try and change franchises, one of the biggest things that they preach about is uh, diversity in a setting. And uh, that's not diversity of ideas, mind you, but rather a checklist of uh, certain immutable physical and mental characteristics revolving around fictional characters. Why this is such a big and important deal to them, I have no idea, but it is. So this is an area where I think Battletech has an advantage because it's hard to criticize it for not being, you know, racially diverse at the very least, because it absolutely is. There are, I mean, humanity in Battletech is intermingled to the point where, you know, you have uh, people of African descent with the last name, you know, uh, Shu and Takahashi and stuff like that. You've, I mean, just look at, look at Rosselhog for fuck's sake. The people speak a combination of Swedish and Japanese over there, which I can't even begin to figure out how that would even work. But there isn't any particular race that is, I would say, oppressed in the setting in any way. The overall structure of most societies in Battletech, it's very egalitarian, it's a uh, meritocracy. So if you have the abilities and the skills to rise above, it doesn't matter what your race is, it doesn't matter what your gender is. You are, you know, all anyone cares about is can you get the job done? And if you can do that, you're in. So Battletech is filled with a lot of things that these people love. It's got tons and tons of racial diversity. It has got strong women all over the place. Uh, women in leadership roles, the Magistracy of Canopus is a matriarchal society, you know, and there's options for this sort of thing all over the place. And I think that this is overall a good thing. You know, the more options you give players, the more the more fun people are going to have, in my opinion, as long as they're not, you know, drowning in pointless minutiae. But the fact that there is a faction for just about 
everyone's taste is one of Battletech's strengths and one of the reasons that it's been able to survive uh, a lot of the hardships that it's had. But that's kind of a double-edged sword, like I said before, because while it is something that might hold them at bay a little bit and keep them from, you know, make it more difficult for them to find something to criticize about it, it's also the sort of thing that might draw a bunch of them in. And if I know these people, and believe me, I know these people, one of the things that I know is that they will never be satisfied and you can never be uh, correct enough for their taste. They will, they are a solution in search of a problem, and so they point out problems wherever they can. And it doesn't matter if there's a problem there or not. Like They call things problematic that are not in any way problematic, and that's kind of their go-to strategy. They point out little things here and there, and then they make a bunch of mental gymnastics to say how, you know, this is uh, because of white supremacy, or it's because of uh, misogyny or uh, patriarchy and all this other, all these other nebulous ideas that are very poorly defined and vague so that they can just loosely apply it to whatever they don't like. Or even if they like it, you can just apply it to something that is liked by people that they don't like. And I think that's what's going to be the struggle for Battletech. This is not a setting that really has a lot that they can criticize in their usual way, but I also don't think that that really matters. I don't think that they're actually here to provide solutions to these perceived problems. They're here because they don't like us, the people who like this. The fact that we enjoy this setting means that there's something wrong with it as far as these folks are concerned, and that therefore it needs to be fixed. And by fixed, I mean taken down several pegs, and made completely different so that nobody enjoys it. Because a lot of these guys, you know, they, they aren't interested in Battletech. They're not Battletech fans. They just want to make sure that you don't have something to enjoy yourself. Now, I want to make it absolutely clear. I have nothing against the communities that these people claim that they support. You know, you want to say that you identify as a sandworm from Dune that's non-binary and reproduces through mitosis, you go right on ahead. I don't I don't give a crap what what you think about that sort of thing. That's that's on you. And you know what in you know who who you're interested in, you know, in uh the hubba hubba kind of way, what two consenting adults do in the privacy of their own bedroom is none of my business and I don't care and I don't want to hear about it. Yeah. We're here to play a game with giant stompy robots, and that's it. I don't give a crap about the rest of what you think. You know, if you, I don't care who you voted for. I don't care what your stance on gun control is. I don't care what your stance on abortion is. I don't care. I'm here to play Battletech, and you know, if we're gonna argue politics at the table, let's argue about whether or not. Uh, House Curita is a bunch of monsters or not? And uh, short answer, yes, they, they absolutely are. Uh, free Russell Hug Republic forever. But, you know, I've seen a trend developing in the uh, Battletech communities that I am a part of. And to be clear, I am mostly on places like Facebook. You can call me a boomer all you want, but I'm not going to open a fucking Twitter account. I cannot stand that platform. I don't like Facebook either, but at the very least I can tolerate Facebook and I don't care what it what it is the Zoomers are into now, the TikTok or whatever the fuck. I don't care. I'm not a huge social media guy. But I find that the place where the Battletech guys tend to congregate is Facebook and Discord servers. And while the Discord servers have been mostly intact, I've noticed a bunch of trends changing on those Facebook groups. So I'm going to give a specific example. A while back uh, there was Gen Con that came around and uh, CGL has a Battletech display at Gen Con. And somebody had taken a picture of a line in Gen Con where they had a bunch of the figures from Wave 1 and Wave 2 of the Kickstarter I believe. I wasn't following it super closely and the post was kind of about that. It was about picking up uh, some miniatures at Gen Con. But 
the comment section was absolutely vitriolic on this particular post because apparently there was some confusion as to whether or not the hosts of Gen Con were requiring people to have a COVID-19 vaccine in order to participate in the event. And good lord, the amount of disrespect for fellow Battletech players I saw in that comment section was really disheartening. And I've noticed it continuing, and I feel like there's a bunch of people who came in who are more interested in the politics of the other players than they are just enjoying Battletech for what it is. And, you know, leaving that sort of thing at the door when you come in. It used to be, you know, you go into a game store and you play a game with somebody, and it, it didn't matter, you know? Like, you, you left that sort of thing at the door of the shop. You were coming in there to have a good time with your buddy, or, you know, even a complete stranger. You just sat across the table from, and you start playing a game, and at the end of it, you walk over, you shake their hand, and you say, thank you for the game, because, you know, it's... That's, that's that's polite. That's sportsmanship. That's what you do. And, you know, there, there's guys in my local game store that if we were to talk politics, I'd probably want to punch them in the face because I find their views disgusting. But we come into the game store, we play a game, we have a good time, we're getting along, we're enjoying something together that we can both agree on. At the end of it, I shake hands with this guy and I thank him for the game. That sort of thing is rapidly... De it's, it's, we're losing it. And it's been just so depressing to see. Now, it hasn't happened in my area specifically. I'm still able to meet up with this particular individual and play a game or two. And it's not an issue. But I feel like we're coming to the point where that's going to be a rarity. And we're not going to see that kind of respect for our fellow man anymore. And I think... Part of it is this strategy that these particular groups have. And that strategy tends to be divide and conquer. One of the first things that these groups do, I saw this uh, in Star Wars, I saw this in Star Trek, they like to split a fan base over little things, silly things, and make it so that it's such a sticking point that people can't get along. Because if we're unified, then we're a lot harder to deal with. But if they can fragment us up, we start falling away little by little, and the next thing you know, there's nobody left. And I think that this is starting to happen in Battletech. Now, at the moment, it's still fairly small. It's little groups of people here and there. And so, you know, this... I pointed out a problem, so the next step is, well, what do we do about it? How do we keep this sort of thing from happening? How do we keep Battletech from turning into a Star Wars Last Jedi fiasco? How do we keep it from turning into a Star Trek Discovery and Picard fiasco? How do we keep it from falling into the hands of people who don't care about the setting for what it is and want to throw their modern-day sensibilities and politics into something from the 1980s that we like the way that it is. And I think that the answer to that is that we have to be very careful about the types of people we engage with in these communities. Now, I love the Battletech community. I think that these are some of the most wholesome and enjoyable guys I've ever been with, some of the most helpful. I've mentioned before that I haven't been in Battletech since the beginning. I'm a 40K convert like a lot of other people. And this community has been so helpful to me, you know, answering questions politely for the most part, and just happy to have another person enjoying their fairly niche hobby. We like bringing more people in. We like having more guys to play with. And I think that's part of the reason why this is starting to happen. We want to have more guys in this hobby. We like sharing our Stompy robots, because Stompy robots are fun. You know, there's a sort of polite nature to how we do things here. And while, yeah, we'll argue all day about which era is the best and make fun of each other for, you know, liking the Dark Age and, uh, you know, throw around terms like Grognard if you don't like the Jihad or what followed, 
but at the end of the day, we're still we're still a fairly close knit community, and we can all agree that the Atlas is a pretty fucking cool robot. And I'm not saying that we need to start being rude to each other. That's not my point. What I'm saying is that we need to be listening carefully to what new people in our community are trying to say. You know, we've got to watch for the people who are less than respectful of what the setting is. People who complain about certain things about the setting. You know, even if it's sort of in a veiled or vague kind of way. People who seem dissatisfied with what it is or have some sort of strange idea about what the setting should do. And I'll, I'll provide something of an example for this as well. So, in one of the communities that I'm in, there was an individual who seemed oddly obsessed with the magistracy of Canopus, specifically cat girls. And I'm probably going to have to do a video addressing cat girls at some point, aren't I? Ah, shit. But that's beside the point. No, this person seemed obsessed with the cat girls specifically because he or she or it or whatever pronouns this individual wanted used. This particular person wanted to be one. And every conversation was dominated by this whole one-track mindset, I guess you could say, that they had about Canopian cat girls. Kind of weird, but you know, we we humored this individual because yeah, all right, Canopus is kind of cool, and you know, the cat girl thing is a meme in BattleTech. Maybe he's just doing it for the meme. I don't know. You know, we tried to explain to him what the cat girls really are, and for those who don't know, they're they'd essentially be glorified sex slaves from Canopus because they're genetically engineered to be basically a satisfaction for somebody's fetish. But this particular individual was not interested in listening to the lore reasons for why this type of person would exist in the setting. He was more interested in having an entire force made up of them. And while you know, we're, we're pretty tolerant to things like that, you know, you want to have your own mercenary company made up of pizza-worshipping Russians from the planet Timbuktu, whatever, you know? <laughs> Make it, make it what you want to make it. But we also kind of said, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And, he, you know, he wasn't interested in what we had to say. And wanted the setting to be changed around his desires. And that sort of thing is a big, big, big red flag when you're talking to somebody. If the setting doesn't accommodate what they're looking for and they want to change how it is so that it does, that's somebody that I don't think you should be spending a whole lot of time with in this community. That's somebody who wants to take the setting and twist it into something else. And I know this really cuts against the grain for a lot of us. I, I don't like that it's come to this, but... Frankly, I've seen too many things ruined in the past to not want to gatekeep the hell out of Battletech. And I know gatekeeping is controversial, but I do absolutely, positively believe in it because I've seen what happens when you don't. I don't like gatekeeping. It makes me feel rude, to be honest. I was raised in an old-fashioned way where you, you're polite to everybody, no matter what. You know, you turn the other cheek and all that other stuff. But we're at the point now where if you play so nice and polite with everybody, these guys aren't nice. They aren't going to be nice to you. And if you're nice, they're just going to walk over you and push you out of the way and ruin something else. So what we got to do is actually put our foot down and say, no, that's not how it works. This is how it is, and we like it this way, and we're not going to fucking change it. And, you know, there's a lot of freedom in this setting. There's a lot of space for you to create your own thing. But it's not limitless. There are rules, there are guidelines, and there are principles. There are things that are core to the setting that cannot and should not just be ignored when it's convenient for you. If you start allowing that sort of thing to happen, that's how people take over. That is how you lose a franchise to these crazy people.
Now I know that this video has kind of been a downer and I also know that a lot of the guys who watch my channel are new to Battletech. And I am not trying to discourage any of you guys from joining into this hobby and participating in it. We like having new people, believe it or not. But there is a caveat to that. While we'd love to have you and we want to make you feel welcome, we also need to be careful and understand that if we're, you know, coming across as a little bit standoffish, it's not because we don't like you and it's not because we don't want you here, it's just because we are protective of this hobby. And that's the thing about about gatekeeping. Gatekeeping doesn't mean closing the gate and keeping every other person out. It's keeping the gate. It's being careful who you let in. And I know there's a lot of guys who have joined into this recently who are completely down with what the setting is. They get it. They like it for the same reasons we do. Welcome aboard. Come on in. We'd love to have you. But if you come in or want to come in and you have nothing but complaints about what this setting is or you want to start changing things because it doesn't fit you know, your, your precious little modern sensibilities, then there's the door. Have a nice day. Because this is a place where we all enjoy our stompy robots. We like it exactly the way that it is. And the only thing that we want changed is the goddamn Dark Age to be made non-canon. And for the people who are already in this hobby, the people who, well, really my core audience, I guess you could say, the guys who are, who are inside and enjoying this game for what it is, please, for the love of God, leave your real-world politics at the door. Because it's so divisive, it's so irritating. I, for one, and I know a lot of other people like me, we come to this place to forget about all that other shit that's going on. It's all depressing. We don't want it in Battletech. Lord knows, Battletech has enough politics in it as it is. And it's the fun kind of politics there, the kind of, like, reading through a history book type of politics. But I don't give a crap who you voted for in 2016 or 2020. I don't give a crap what your stance on any of the, the major political issues is. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about giant robots and fictional factions that don't exist and will never exist. We're here to have fun. You know, and that's that's my biggest thing here. Keep Battletech fun, guys. Alright? Because this shit this shit with you know the the NPCs and SJWs and everything like that, it's not fun. We have to put in a little bit of work to keep the setting enjoyable and keep it the way that it is. The last thing that we need is to have knives at each other's throat over just silly nonsense that doesn't fucking matter at the game table. So with this, once again, possibly incoherent rambling rant being off my chest and out of my system, hopefully I'll be able to sleep a bit better at night. But also, to kind of help with the new guys a little bit, and so that I know that a lot of them are going to be kind of concerned now about what the setting is. If you're new to Battletech and you don't know a ton about the setting, how do you be respectful of it? And that's fair. We want to teach you a lot about the setting. We want to share what it is about it that makes it so great. I'm planning a whole series of videos coming out in the near future where I'm going to talk about what Battletech is, its core ideas, the sorts of things that we love about the setting, sort of things that have drawn us to this universe, and the things that should not be changed. I've done one of these already with my video on aliens in Battletech, and I'm planning a whole bunch of new ones in the future that talk about similar types of topics. So those of you who are new to the franchise and are worried about getting kicked out, relax. All right, I'm here. I'm going to help you out, and we do love having new people here. I know it sounds kind of silly to say that after all the craziness I just spouted about how we need to keep some people out, but if you've made an effort to learn, and you've made an effort to be respectful of it, then we are elated that you're here, and we want to help you out in any way that we can. So, 
keep an eye on the channel for videos like that coming out soon. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And really, down in the comment section, I'd love to hear what you guys have experienced. Have you come across this new sort of trend in Battletech lately? Have you noticed people who are a little bit less than respectful of the franchise? Has this sort of thing happened to you? Have you seen you know, the warning signs start to develop? I'd like to hear about your experiences down below. And I know I put the tagline at the end of most of my videos about how I read every single comment. For the moment, that's true. Uh, there have been a lot more of them coming in uh, recently. So it's been a little bit harder to keep track of them. But I do make an effort to go down and read you guys' comments and, you know, kind of give my own little little feedback here and there, show my support for the guys who are being cool down there. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on this topic. So let me know. So hold the line, you guys. They can take our lightsabers. They can take our phasers. But they can never take our giant robots. Until next time, this is Mage Leader, signing off.